the Nebra Sky Disk, as it has become known, grabs the attention of the archaeological world. It isn't just a good find, it's an incredible find. There, inlaid in gold, is the reason why it's been called magical. An incredible picture of the sky, with what appears to be the sun, moon, and stars. Nothing like this has ever been seen before. Mapping the stars has been one of the great achievements of mankind. It is a task that has obsessed scholars and scientists for thousands of years. But no one knows when or where he first started to understand their movement. Or write this knowledge down. What is known is that the Egyptians and Babylonians depicted their important constellations as animals. But realistic star images did not appear until after 1500 BC in Egypt. These had always been considered to be the oldest known to man. But all that seems to have just changed. Sixteen hundred BC. It makes the Nebra sky disk the oldest depiction of the night sky in history. A hundred years older than the oldest images found in Egypt. The disk is the earliest concrete astronomical representation of the stars in the sky. It's the first representation of the universe in human history. The sunship is one of the most potent and enduring images in prehistory. And it originated not in Europe, but in Egypt. Ancient Egyptians believed that their most powerful deity, Ra, the sun god, traveled through the night sky on a boat so that in the morning he could be reborn at sunrise. But what was an Egyptian idea doing on this allegedly European disk? Along with the sunship, there are very deliberate shallow curves on the side. I didn't know what they were, but I measured the angle and it was 82 degrees. 82 degrees is a very specific angle. And it reminds him of something that Europeans had known since the earliest of time. It is here between the high midsummer sunset and the low midwinter sunset where the sun travels at about 80 degrees along the horizon. Since prehistoric times, ancient monuments have been aligned to mark these solstices all across northern Europe. But the precise angle varies from place to place. Further north, it would be 90 degrees. To the south, just 70 degrees. Only in a tiny band of central Europe would the sun's journey measure exactly 82 degrees. And as Professor Schlosser returns to the site in eastern Germany, where the disk was found, he encounters something that is beyond coincidence. That's where the sun sets midwinter. That's where the sun sets midsummer. The angle between both is precisely 82 degrees. 
This angle corresponds to the journey of the sun between summer and winter for this specific latitude right here in Nebra. There is the image thought to be the sun, worshipped all across Europe as the bringer of life. The sun is absolutely central to Northern European Bronze Age religion. There's a clear connection between the sun and life. If the sun disappears, then life comes to an end. The next piece in the jigsaw, a crescent moon. The moon has been associated with cults from Germany to Scotland. It is used as a symbol to mark the passage of time. Time is something very inexplicable in the past. And if you can control time, and if you understand time, then you are a powerful, a, a powerful human being. And then, of course, there is the horizon band, marking the sun's sacred solstices in Central Europe. We can see that what is represented is something which marks the summer and winter solstices at sunrise and sunset. So an immensely complex picture is beginning to build up. Alongside all these symbols from North and Central Europe, there is also the sunboat, found as far away as Egypt. We have mythologies from this period which tell us that the sun, during the night, traveled by means of a solar boat. And lastly, of course, there are the stars. Perhaps the most spectacular thing to see is the final piece in the jigsaw. And these are the Pleiades. The Pleiades was important in the ancient civilizations of Mesopotamia and ancient Greece. It appeared in early fall and disappeared in spring. Vital dates for Bronze Age farmers. We know from Greek writers that the Pleiades were used as an agricultural marker so that farmers knew when they should do certain agricultural activities. So what the Nebra disc does is to tell people that it's not only the right time to do it, but it is the, the blessed time to do it. The moon, solstices, a sunship, the Pleiades. If this interpretation is correct, the disc had combined great religious themes to tell an enigmatic story all had been glimpsed before in isolation or in ones or twos spread out across Europe and the Middle East. But now it seems that the makers of the disc put them all together. Seeing them all together, that's the important thing. I mean, that was what was so mind-blowing for me. We've got all together, the sun and the moon, and that, that by itself would have been exciting enough. But not only that, but we've got symbol upon symbol piling onto this disc. In the dark heart of Europe, an area traditionally seen as primitive and uncivilized, 3,600 years ago, it's possible that a complex religion had taken root, drawing on influences from across the known world. These symbols are all part of a complex European-wide belief system whereby people looked at the heavens, worshipped them, worshipped the sun, worshipped the moon, aligned their monuments on the sunrise or the moonrise. And because Nebra has brought all these symbols together, it tells us for the first time, perhaps, what people were really seeing, perceiving and believing. <laughs>